Amen. All right, good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with 930 morning prayer. Um, before we get into that, there's a scripture I want to share in 2 Kings chapter 7. Um, 2 Kings chapter 7, starting at verse 1. The Bible says, Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, somebody say tomorrow. Tomorrow, about this time, a saya of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two sayas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Now, there's a lot of things in this verse that are contextual that I don't have time to get into, but I will say this, that um, in the context of this particular story, the economy has been flipped to where things that are worthless cost over a month's wage. But the Bible says that tomorrow, thus saith the Lord, the economy will be flipped. Look at verse 2. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes but you shall not experience it. And so when this word was met by a level of skepticism, the man of God told the man who was skeptical, said, listen, you're going to see this with your eyes, but you're not going to experience it. And so we're believing by faith that not only will we see it with our eyes, but we'll also experience the fruit of it. And here's the unconventional way by which the economy was flipped. It says, now there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate, and they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we say we will enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. If they keep us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall only die. Listen, these are men who have nothing to lose, right? So he said, if we sit here, we're going to die, but if we get up and make a move, we could live, so we may as well move, amen? Verse number five, and they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians, and when they had come to the outskirts of the Syrian camp, to their surprise, no one was there. Glory be to God, and here's why. Look at verse six, for the Lord had caused the army of the Syrian to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army, so that they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. So as these four leprous men were walking toward the Syrian camp, it was only four men but the enemy heard an army. Glory be to God. And I'm believing by faith that we as the people of God, as we move in the kingdom of God, our enemy will hear armies. And I want you to see here, it says the armies of the Hittites and the armies of the Egyptians. So they thought there were two armies attacking them. So the Syrians packed up and left. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, their donkeys, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent, ate and drank, and carried from it silver and gold and clothing, and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent, carried some from there also, and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right this day, is a day of good news. Somebody say good news. Go be to God. And we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So we're believing by faith that this thing is going to be flipped in our favor by the, by the power of our obedience and moving according to the spirit of God. Amen. We're going to have Deaconess Jones come up and pray us in. Give God praise. Amen. Glory be to God this morning. Father God, we come this morning giving you honor, giving you praise, 
and thanking you for all that you've already done in our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the things that you're getting ready to do and the things that you, you, you're doing that we don't see that you're doing, Father God. We just thank you this evening, or this morning. Father God, I ask that you just wrap your arms of comfort and protection around the bereaved families today. Give them the strength, the courage that they need to just continue on walking this life that you have led for them, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just continue to comfort them and let them know that you are there with them and they are not alone. Heavenly Father, help us to continue to pray for them, continue to love on them, and continue to be there for them. Father God, help us to just continue to check on them and make sure that they're okay and that they don't need anything. Father God, I just thank you for all that you have already done in my life, and I thank you for the things that you're getting ready to do. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the headship of this church. I ask that you continue to strengthen them, continue to give them the, the word for your people, and Father God, help them to continue to uphold the mantle that you have placed upon their lives. Father God, I thank you for our assistant pastors, Pastor Kay and Pastor Clark and their families, and I ask that you continue to be with them and continue to walk with them and continue to give them a word for your people and continue to just help them to uphold the mantle that you have placed upon their lives. Heavenly Father, I ask that you continue to touch the visions that they have for this church and help them to just continue to work on the vision that our headship has for this, this uh, church. Father God, I pray for all the members of EMC. I pray for strength and I pray for healing for any sickness, illness, or disease they may be dealing with at the moment. Father God, I ask that you just continue to touch, heal, and deliver today. Touch, heal, and deliver all those that are in the nursing home. Father God, strengthen them. Continue to just allow their faith to get strong in you, Father God, and help them to see that even though they're in a nursing home, that they are not alone. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just continue to touch whatever sickness, illness, or disease that may be attacking their bodies today and just heal their bodies this evening, today, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you go into the prisons today. Touch the minds of the prisoners today, Father God, and just turn their minds back around to you, Father God. Help them to see that they are not alone and just continue to strengthen them and uphold them today, Father God. Heavenly Father, help them to continue to turn their lives around and start walking the way that you would have them to walk and start believing and trusting in you, Father God. Heavenly Father, we would just fast and pray today and just continue to just turn to you, Father God, whenever we're worried about anything, whenever we're just boggled down with so much that is going on, Father God, if we would just trust in you, we know that everything will be all right. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just continue to just touch, heal, and deliver today, Father God. Touch all those that have been infected by this virus that is going on, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you touch all those that are doing all this here destruction of property and looting and, and rioting. And Father God, I ask that you just touch their minds today. Help them to see that that is not the way that you would have them to live their lives today, Father God. Heavenly Father, help us to just use wisdom today. Help us to just trust what you have given us today, Father God, and just continue to just hold on to that. Because just like everything else that has happened in this world, Father God, we know that this too shall pass. Heavenly Father, I just ask that you just continue to just be with us today, Father God. Help us to continue to just pray for one another, Father God. Help us to continue to just touch, heal, and deliver, and just be there for one another, Father God. Oh, Father God, we love you today. We love you today, Father God. We honor you today and we glorify you today, Father God. Heavenly Father, we lift you up today and we sing hallelujah to your name, Father God. Hallelujah to your name today, Father God. Hallelujah to your name today, Father God. Glory to your name today, Father God. Praises to your name today, Father God. Oh, Father God, we thank you today. We thank you today. We thank you today, Father God. Heavenly Father, if we, didn't have, if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. So we thank you today, Father God. We thank you for who you are, Father God, because you are God all by yourself, and then you don't need anyone else. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. Father God, we just thank you for continuing to walk in with us, Father God, talking with us, Father God, and helping us to see today, Father God, all the things that you are doing in our lives, Father God. Heavenly Father, we ask your forgiveness today for all the sins that we have knowingly and unknowingly done. Father God, we repent today 
and we just continue to just turn our lives over to you, Father God. Oh, Father God, just continue to just wrap your arms of comfort and protection around each and every last one of us, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just touch all those that are here right now and touch all those that are on their way, Father God. And Heavenly Father, I ask that you touch the man today that's going to be bringing the word, Father God. Help him to just deliver the word in the way that you would have it delivered today, Father God. And Heavenly Father, we pray that that, that word today will touch a soul today that is lost, that's thinking that they're forgotten, that don't nobody cares, Father God. But we want them to know today, we care, and we are there for them. Heavenly Father, I just thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for continuing to just be in our lives today, Father God. Heavenly Father, we know that without you, we can do nothing, but with you, all things are possible. Heavenly Father, we, we know the word, 2 Corinthians seven fourteen tells us, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, turn from their wicked ways, then you will hear from heaven. You will forgive this land and, the, and that you will heal it today, Father God. And we just ask for healing today, Father God. Healing from all the hurt. Healing from all the pain. Healing from all the suffering that is going on, Father God. And Father God, we ask for healing from all the injustice that is going on in the world today, Father God. Heavenly Father, we pray for strength for all our frontline workers today, Father God. We pray for strength in their bodies, strength in their faith. And Father God, we ask that you continue to give them what you see they need to do the works that you have called them to do. Father God, we ask that you just continue to strengthen them to just continue to be there for all those that are sick, that have been infected by this virus, any type of sickness, illness, or disease. We ask that you continue to cover them by your blood today, Father God. Heavenly Father, help them to just continue to just stay strong because we know that after a while, all this will be over. Heavenly Father, I just pray and ask that you just continue to just touch your people today, Father God. We know that you hear the cries of your people and we know that you, you will answer them in your time, Father God. And we thank you for that, Father God. We thank you for all that you are continuing to do in our lives, Father God, and we ask that you just continue to just be with us today, Father God. And Father God, help us to just continue to be there for one another. Help us to continue to just show love to one another and help us to just continue to just wrap our arms around one another. Father God, I ask that you just be with our children today, Father God. Touch their minds today, Father God. Help them to just stay on track with you, Father God, and just continue to just do the things that you're calling them to do. Because, Father God, we know they're going to be our future leaders. And we just ask that you just continue to just wrap your arms and comfort around those young children today, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with the singles today. Touch their minds, touch their hearts. Help them to just stay focused on you, Father God, and walk this walk the way that you have them to walk. Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with our married couples today. Continue to just strengthen that bond in that family, Father God, and help them to just continue to just hold on to you, Father God. And when there's any affliction that is going on in this marriage, I ask that you just touch whatever the situation is, Father God, and just heal that problem and just help them to just Stay yoked together in your name, Father God. Heavenly Father, I ask that you be with the mothers of the church today, Father God. We don't know what they may be battling with. We don't know what they may be dealing with. But we ask that you just continue to just wrap your arms of comfort around them. We speak healing over their bodies today, Father God. Healing from any sickness. Healing from any pain that they may be dealing with right now, Father God. And healing from any hurt from a lost one, or, or one that may be uh, sick or may be infected by this virus. And Heavenly Father, we ask that you touch our first family today. We know that they're dealing with a loved one that has been infected by this virus, but we speak healing, not just healing, but total healing today, Father God, because we know that as long as we put it in your hands, it's going to be all right. And we just trust and believe that today. Father God, I just thank you for all the, the healing that, that is going on in the land today, Father God. But I ask that, that you just help your people to just use wisdom today, Father God, because the virus is still out there. Help them to just continue to just do what be, that is being asked them to do, Father God. Wearing face masks and being social distancing, Father God. 
Just help them to just use wisdom today. Heavenly Father, I just thank you today. I continue to lift you up today, Father God, and I continue to praise your name, and we continue to glorify you today, Father God, and let the word today, Father God, reach that lost soul today, Father God, whether it's here or in another church. Help them to just want to turn their life around and just find a better way to live today, Father God, and we know with you that can happen. Heavenly Father, all these things I'm praying and asking in your son Jesus' name today. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen.
Well, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Come on, clap your hands. Let's give God some praise. In the sanctuary, give God some praise. Live stream, give God some praise. Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. Ah. Wherever you are, wherever you are, the sanctuary is open. The sanctuary is open, so you're welcome to come in the house. But if you choose to stay at the house, give God praise wherever you are. We want to welcome you to Evangelistic Ministries Church, where we are still motivated about Jesus, where doctors bolded and bolded are our presiding prelates. And we thank God for another opportunity to worship and to praise his name. Before we get into the opening scripture and the opening prayer, we do want to let you know that we do have some new protocols in place because we have opened the sanctuary and welcoming anyone who would like to come in. But there are some protocols, somebody say protocols, protocols, protocols that we have put in place. So, of course, as um, ordered by the CDC, um, we do practice social distancing of six feet or more. So if you come into the sanctuary, you'll see certain pews are roped off and certain pews are not. And so we do practice social distancing of six feet or more. There, there does not need to be any congregating while you're in the sanctuary. Anytime you leave the sanctuary, come into the sanctuary, you do need to have your mask on. And we are asking that you hand sanitize. We have plenty of hand sanitizer. Go to the restroom, wash your hands. And if there are any children 12 years of age or younger, we're asking if they need to go to the restroom, that they be accompanied by an adult. And our ushers are in place. Our angels of mercy are in position to help you with anything that you need. But we say welcome back to the house. We thank God that the house of God is open. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give God some praise as we get into the scripture and the morning prayer. Amen. So the scripture reading this morning is coming from the book of John, John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. And as I woke up this morning and I, I kept hearing this, this singular word in my spirit, I kept hearing the word freedom. Somebody say freedom, freedom, freedom. I keep hearing that word. And so let's go to John chapter 8, verses 31 through 36. I'm reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, okay, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered. They, they, they had a response to this. This is powerful what Jesus said, but they had something that they wanted to respond. They said, they answered him, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? And Jesus said, answered them saying, most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, here it is right here. If the son makes you free, glory be to God, you shall be free indeed. Somebody say freedom freedom in this house. Father, we thank you. We honor you, God, for the privilege to come into your presence and to give your name glory. And we first come into your presence by giving you praise. For you said, God, in your word that you inhabit living and dwell in the praises of your people. So we will not come into your presence without first giving you praise. We throw this week off of us. We throw off anything that may not be like you, God. And we say, have your way in this house. Have your way not just in this house, God, but have your way in the houses of our hearts. For your word God declared in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 6 around the 19th verse that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we can have church wherever we are. For I recollect in my mind in the book of Exodus chapter 3 when Moses was on the backside of the desert and he was a fugitive from the law. The Bible says that he saw a burning bush and a voice came out of the bush that said, take off your shoes for the ground 
ground that you stand on is holy ground. We don't need no church to give God praise. We don't need no building to give God glory. We can give God glory right where we are. We don't have to just wait on Sunday. We can do it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, in my living room, in my bathroom, wherever your presence is, God, we can give your name glory. And we're not going to miss out on the opportunity this morning to give your name praise. And so, God, we say, have your way in the name of Jesus Christ. Bring forth the healing in the name of Jesus. Bring forth deliverance in the name of Jesus. Bring forth your power, God, in Jesus' name. Right here in this sanctuary, God, and right through live stream, there's somebody who's hurting God. Heal the hurt in Jesus' name. There's somebody who's confused God. Bring clarity in the name of Jesus. There's somebody who needs you like never before, and we thank you, God, that you can meet the need in Jesus' name. For you said, God, that the word is like water, and it can fill every gap. Oh, glory be to God. And so, God, we, we speak that anointing, God. Make ready every minister in Jesus' name. Make ready the choir. Make ready the band, the deaconess, the deaconesses, God. The, 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 the nursing team, God. The hospitality, God. Thank you that we're all on a string, God. Ready to minister to the needs of the people. And your Holy Spirit will come in and do the work that he knows to do. Because he's the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And I thank you, Jesus, according to Philippians chapter 1, verse number 6, that if you started something on the inside of us, you shall bring it to completion in Jesus' name. And God, I thank you that as the word goes forward, you'll make ready the lips of clay who will bring forth the word, but you'll make ready the hearts of the people, God, to receive what it is you have to say to us. And we will not be forgetful hearers of the word, but we will be doers of the word in the name of Jesus Christ. That word will take root in our hearts and it will bring forth some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. And we'll give your name the glory. We'll give your name the honor. We'll give your name the praise. If one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight, how much more can all of us who agree that the enemy is defeated and God is exalted in our lives? Lives. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and give thanks, God. Amen. How many know you're a friend of God?
come on. If you know you got hands, you got peace, stand up on your feet. And let God know how much you're grateful. Let God know how much you're grateful. to keep you in your right mind if he has decided in spite of our failures and our faults to still look beyond that and see our need. We have a lot to be grateful for. Don't think that you did it on your own because that's a lie. That's something that you have configured in your own mind. But the reality is if God didn't do it, it wouldn't have been done. And so God, we thank you and we praise you and we reverence you. We don't come in here to look at each other but we come to serve a holy God, to remind him of what he's done for us because he's gonna do greater things than that. And I thank you, God, that you are ready in the miracle working business, God. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In my, in my voice, I hold up, I'm gonna do this real quick. I feel like going on. I feel like going on. Though trials come on
Exchange that stress and those migraines and headaches and you give it to God. He says, cast your cares upon me. He said, come to me who are all weary and heavy laden. I will give you rest. And I speak rest in this place. I speak rest over him. I speak rest in the name of Jesus because until we rest, God cannot do what he needs to do. And so I rest in him. Rest in him. I keep saying it, but rest in him. Rest in him because he's seen it before. He's handled it before. He's already done what he said he's going to do. But I rest in him. I know that he's able. I know that I don't have the faith, but if I just can't believe for a moment that he's able to do it, my muscle seed faith would move mountains. And whatever you need from God today, receive it. If you're able to stand, go ahead and stand. If you're not, it's okay. But right now, receive from God. I'm going to do it with you. I'm not going to ask you to do anything that I'm not doing. But I'm going to lift my hands and receive. If you're able to this morning, just lift your hands and receive. I receive. I receive. I receive. Yes. I receive. I receive. I receive. I receive, I receive, I claim it, I claim it, get your joy back, come on, I claim it, I claim it, I claim it, I hold on, yes, you got to hold I receive it. I 
I believe it. I believe it. I receive it. I receive it. I believe it. I believe it. Hold on. If you're watching us, say it. I feel like going on. You know the storms of life are raging. Death is on every side. I feel like going Now, everyone in the sound of my voice, she's having problems with your right arm. Lift your right arm up right now. Everyone here has been having problems with that right arm. Lift your arm up right now. I speak healing. I command the numbness to leave. I command the weakness in it to leave. I command it in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood right now. Touch every arm right now, Lord. You had me to call that for a reason. Touch it right now. If you believe it, say yeah. yeah. Realize when things are going on, your body gets attacked and you feel alone. Your mind is bombarded. Stress is in the place, but we speak a blessing to erase it from your face. We release healing in the room. We release joy in the room. We release compassion in the room. Yeah! Touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. Touch us, Lord. The devil is a liar! The devil is a liar! The devil is a liar! Touch us, Lord! Lift your hands where you are. If you believe God can, release it into your inner atmosphere. Translate it, convince yourself. Too many times we try to convince other folks about Jesus. But how many know sometimes you got to convince yourself? That's translated when David said, Sometimes I've got to encourage myself. In other words, he had to encourage himself to let himself know that God called him as a shepherd and made him who he is. A lot of times we get delivered from things and we forget where we came from. I don't care how many years I've been living. I don't care how much blessings I've received. I've never forgot the hood. I never forgot where I came from. I never forgot the pot in me. I never forgot the sorghum certain. I never forgot that. And when I sat and forget it, it don't mean I enjoyed doing it at the time, but it's what that's what it took to get me to where I am. So just lift your hands and say, Lord, you use that to make me. Yeah. We getting ready to go in this word. Choir, we thank God for you. And I, I want to give you some time to, thank you, to get to your seat so you can lift your hands. 
and uh, we're going to uh, do some things. That, let me tell you something about the dimension of the faith that we have to understand as we're preparing. Uh, the Word of God is true. Say that. The Word of God is true. And the Word of God does not lie. And the Word of God will not return to God void. That means no matter how much stupidity we may do ourselves, a bad decision, God has a way of making sure that what he spoke over you is going to come to pass. Do I have any witnesses in here? But when you look at it, there still takes a sign that you must obey what's necessary to maintain your health. And I don't care how saved you are, and I don't care how many times you speak in tongues, you need to have faith, man. Hey, man, it shouldn't, it shouldn't take an ordinance from the city to make you wear a face mask. Amen? That's your health. Now, if you're ready to die or catch something, then don't wear the face mask. But this protects us. Amen? Well, I don't say I protect. I've been, well, you got insurance on your car, I hope. Amen? Take care of yourselves. Come on, now. Don't be so, so holy or so stubborn that you just want to rebel because you don't believe it's going to help you. Amen? And sometimes you're contaminating other people. That's the whole key, contaminating other people. We thank God for those who are in the room, and we thank God for those who are watching. We're getting ready to go into the book of Psalms 105. And, and, and this word that I'm going to give you today, and I want you to write it down in your notes. Write it down. I was on God's mind a long time ago. Let me help you out with that. I was on God's mind a long time ago. I was on God's mind before I was born. I was on God's mind before my parents met uh, my biological got together and made me. I was on God's mind. God has a plan to redeem before you needed to be redeemed. Now, I'm preaching already. But sometimes during the turbulence in our lives, we get to the point we forget about that. So we're going to go into the book of Psalms 105. What did I tell you the topic is? Say it again. Amen. Psalm 105, and I'm going to ask that uh, Pastor K help me out when I need him to read it. I'll tell him, but I'm going to start it out as well. Well, no, you go ahead. Go on, take, take it, verse 1. What does it say? Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Okay, it's, it's, it said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord. And call up on his name. Give thanks unto the Lord. Now, let me explain something to you. And I got to clarify, you don't have to be in the church building to give thanks to the Lord. As a matter of fact, if the only time you give thanks to the Lord is when you're in the building, you fake. If the only time you open your Bible is when you're in a house of a church of God, you fake. Amen? You call me fake? Yeah, if the only time... The only time you open a God's word is when you're in trouble, you fake. Oh, I'm getting in somebody's closet. We've got to understand to give thanks to the Lord means a daily process, like washing your face, brush your teeth. Amen? And I pray everyone here brush their teeth every day. They wash their face every day. I pray. Amen. You know, with, with this six-foot distance, and I can't tell you to look at somebody and see if their face clean. But <laughs> Some of y'all are probably glad because of the breast situation. But however... But we've got to understand that we should give thanks unto the Lord at all times. Read. Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Stop, stop very quick. Go back to verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Next. What does it say? Call upon his name. Uh-huh. We're Psalm 105. Make known his deeds among the people. There you go. Now, when you give thanks to the Lord, you're making folk know who you believe in. Now, let me clarify. You, 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 nobody's perfect, so you can't 
say, I got to be perfect to call on the name. No, saints and sinners experience the same. Same wrath, same judgment. When it rained outside on the sinner, it rained outside on you. Amen? So we must understand, you got to make his deeds known to people. Let people know what God has done for you. You know, I remember back in the hood in Sunnyside, down in Houston, Texas, that even the wine odors, now some of y'all don't know what the wine odors is because I think they got a new word for it now, I think. But the wine odors on the corner would tell you, boy, you need to go to church. But on a Sunday, they was on the corner. And I don't know about your old schoolers, but back in the old school days, they had a, a, a bottle of Thunderbird and a sour pickle. Where y'all at? Some of y'all do it like that. Go and raise your hand up and say you was there. And what they would do is they'd, they'd bite on the sour pickle and take the Thunderbird and throw it up. But what am I trying to get you to understand? Even in that, they knew God. Why? Because everybody has a different concept of giving thanks. And you might not agree with the concept, but that's the way I praise God. Well, I'm getting ready to get deep on you. Because tradition is being eradicated during the COVID-19. God is tearing down the idols and tearing down all the traditions and, and letting people know, look, get that mess out the way so I can do what I came here for today. I don't need you to look a certain way. I don't need you to dress a certain way. I need you to get ready because when I get ready to come, I'm not going to regulate who I call by what they got on. I'm not going to regulate who I call by what they have already done. And we got to understand that when you give thanks in your situation, those who are watching, that's not all the way in a church building. Get God in your life. And God will lead you to the house of God that you need to be in to get yourself fed. Ooh, see, the church's job is not to change people. Now, I came from the hole in this background. But when you came in, they changed you. I can remember. People come in with a short dress. The mother would walk over there, don't even know her. Now, I'm not kicking at the mother. But sometimes mothers got to realize that back in the old days, they was hoes too. The problem a lot of times, once we get God in our life, we forget you used to be that. You forget you used to be the drunk. You forget you used to be the hoe. You forget you used to smoke the reefer. You forget that you used to cuss all the time. You forget that. And once you get delivered, you think everybody else ought to be like you is now. Not realizing they like you was then. So God is taking the tradition and letting people know, look, this COVID-19 not only hitting unchurched, it's hitting church. And no matter how holy you live, no matter how you speak in tongues, you have a human body that can easily catch a disease. So give thanks to the Lord. Let people know who God is. Let them know you ain't perfect. But now, let me put a disclaimer. That don't mean you still cuss. That don't mean you still hope. That don't mean you still drink. Come on now. You got to understand, when, when old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. You can't forget that God already had a plan for you before you were born. You know, if you go visit somebody's house, and you go in there, and they say you can spend the night, you don't know nothing about their house. So then you ask the question, where's the towel? The towels are dry off. The washcloth, where are they at? Why? Because you need to know 
if they were prepared for company. Now, if they say they don't have no, you in the wrong house. What am I trying to get you to understand? Everything that you need, God has already prepared it. He's already prepared your washcloth and your, come on, dry off towel. Come on. He's even giving you the bar of soap called the blood. So tell somebody I'm welcome in his kingdom. Let's move on. Go on. What does it say about singing? Sing to him. Sing psalms to him. Talk of all his wondrous works. Now, for, before I go any further, I want everybody that's watching, everybody here, if God has done wondrous works in your life, throw your hands up. Hey! If he did real wondrous works, say, hey! Oh! Hey! When you look at God it's done all this for you, you got to look back over your life and say, good God Almighty, he loved me. Then Brian had a song I call Super Bad. He said, sometimes I got to kiss myself. Sometimes when I look at how God good has, be, has been to me, how good he's been to me, sometimes I have to jump back and kiss myself. Because I realized, boy, I didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve a wife that I have. I didn't deserve the bump and I, money I got. I didn't deserve the job that I blessed. I didn't deserve the financing. But God, and when I think of how good he's been to me, I got to jump back and kiss myself. I enjoy the wonders of his works. He's got supernatural plans for me. He's got plans that I can't even imagine. Hope there's some stuff that hasn't even come yet. And if you're whipping out on COVID-19, you ain't going to make it. Keep your faith strong. Call faith come by. Here and by. So if you give thanks to him and you let people know who he is, Sang songs to him. Look what verse 3 said. Glory in his holy name. Uh -huh, let what? Let the hearts of those rejoice who seek the Lord. Now here's the part I like. What did it say? Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face evermore. Seek the Lord and his strength. You got to catch this. Because a lot of church folk, we seek the Lord but not his strength. Now, we'll seek his strength for money, prosperity, but we don't seek his strength to stop sinning. Lord, I love you at this level, but got to go to the club, you know? I, I still got to turn it up. But I'm going to be in the choir. Well, not this choir. Just want to clarify. <laughs> Whatever church you go to, you're going to be in the choir, but on Saturday or whatever you go to the club. But you got to realize what it says right here. Seek the Lord and his strength because we are human and we are weak. We cannot stop ourselves from doing some of the stuff we like to do. And everybody in this room got something they like to do. That ain't God. Oh, they ain't got quiet now. They ain't got tradition on. Let me help you. It ain't always just fornication. It ain't always just adultery. Talking about folk ain't right. Gossiping ain't right. Lying with your answer machine saying you're not home, but you're sitting there listening to it. Ain't right. Change your answer machine. I've been telling you for years. Sorry we're not home right now. Just, just let the original one that comes with it please leave message. That's all. The fact that we did that so you didn't lie. <laughs> Call up, please leave message. Okay. Am I helping somebody? Let the factory help you stop lying. <laughs> now watch this. I seek his strength. How long? I seek his strength and his face all the time. Everybody say every time. Every time. Why? We're human. Lord, help me. Sometimes you got to ask, Lord, help me. Stop lying. Lord, help me. Stop cussing. Lord, help me. 
Then when he helps you, you got to submit to the help. Right. God don't body slam you to change you. Validated with the woman with the issue of blood. Jesus didn't body slam the woman, didn't pour a gallon of oil on her head, didn't do nothing. All he did was connect to her faith. And when she touched the hem of a garment, she started moonwalking from the sickness. The scripture don't say moonwalking, I just added that. It's okay to laugh in church. Sometimes y'all need to laugh. When you frown up, you got wrinkles in your face. Right. Amen? Disclaimer, and I don't walk around like this. Right. Right. They're the ones you get on the other side of the sidewalk with. <laughs> Watch this. Read. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done. Stop right there. I want this point. Remember the marvelous works. He already done. Do I have any un already done people in here that already opened up the door? Isn't it awesome how God can take your mess up and fix it up? You knew you blew it. You knew it, and your family wouldn't let you live it down. But God. Turned it into a miracle without the support of the family. Oh, y'all ain't catching me. People always say blood thicker than water. Only one blood thicker than water to me, and that's Jesus. The rest of you got to earn. Some people ain't going to agree on that, but it's just true. You don't pick your family. When you pop out, that's who it is. Why do you think when baby's first born, they come out, they look over there. And in that dimension of thought, my God, where you sent me to? <laughs> Call me daddy, daddy. <laughs> I don't understand how I talk like that. Yeah, give me a few. You don't pick your family. You're birthed into it. Huh? But you pick Jesus. And since you picked Jesus, he picked you. Now I got a bloodline that's eternal. No matter who turned their back on me, I know I got Jesus. Amen? Now, let's move on. Say, remember his marvelous works and what else he had done. Read on. His wonders. His wonders. And the judgments of his mouth. His wonders and the judgment. Come on now. How many know he's a wonder in my soul? He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. What do you say? Bless his name. The wonders. He's done so many wonders. And watch this. His judgments. See that? That's why you don't let people get on your nerves. Because, see, God got a way of judging without you getting messed up. Well, I don't like what they did to me. All right, let God handle it. Let God fix it. You don't have time to talk about it no more. You don't have time to battle with it no more. God trying to take you there, but your mind over there. Like that old secular song, your body's here with me, but your mind is on the other side of town. Look at me. I'm old school. You got to realize that your thought process, when it regurgitates stuff that happened a long time ago, that's just a hindrance to your destiny. Some folk will never apologize. Some folk will never say I'm sorry. Some folk will never bring you a car. But thanks be to God, God will apologize for you. God will carry you forward for you. God will turn everything around. And then those who came against you, he'll fix that. That's his judgment. Hey! Oh! Hey! That's his judgment. 
How many of you know God vindicates real good? Let him do it. Stop talking about it. Amen? Just remember, won't he do it? Said he would. Fight my battles. Verse 6. O ye seed of Abraham. Okay, now watch this now. Here we go. I got to deal with this. All this stuff he's talking about he's going to do, he comes back and say, O ye seed of Abraham. Read. His servant. His servant. 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 Let me ask you something. How many of y'all will only give a tip? Don't raise your hand because I don't want to discriminate you. How many of y'all will only give a tip to a waiter or waitress if they wait on you right, the way you expect? In other words, you discount the fact they didn't cook the meal, they didn't fix the meal, they didn't wash the dishes. You discount that. This fork has a piece of rice on it. You mad at him or her, but they didn't do the dishes. My steak wasn't fixed right. Take it back. You mad at him or her, but they didn't cook the steak. My salad's got too many onions on it. I told you I didn't want no onions. You mad at him or her, cook. When all the servant does is receive your order and deliver it to the kitchen. And then what happens, throw it back, then what happens once it's ready, they say, bing, ticket 322. So they come get ticket 322, thinking that the kitchen and did what they're supposed to do, and they bring it to you, and you trip it. I, I got to go here. I got to go here. Because right now we're in a pandemic where some of these waiters and waitresses are not getting any decent tips. They got limited tables. And you leaving a measly two dollars? Where's your seed principle? Well, they didn't do. They didn't wait on me quick enough. They didn't. You ain't the only one. They stressing. They got family. They got sickness. They got loved ones. Come on, and they out there making mediocre money trying to serve you, and you raising hell because you didn't get what you thought you should. How you going to think about the goodness of God in your life and not be good to somebody else in their life? But she came out with attitude, did you speak nicely? You don't know who he or she waited on earlier. Why am I going here? Seem like she's short with me. He seems like he's short. Okay. Give them time to adjust to the new climate of you. Earlier they waited on Dingleberry. So now Dingleberry gone. Now anointed servant is here. So when you come with your attitude, I'm going to bless you with good word, good motivation. Amen? And see, I'm wise. I'm, I'm a wise old man. When, when I have a female servant, I give the money to my wife to give. That's just me. Because I don't want no mistakes here. Amen? That's what you got to think when you're good looking. Oh, for my age, I'll talk all y'all want. You go. Take it. And put that mask back on, baby. <laughs> and it's just wisdom. Here I go. Bless the servant. God blesses you. You a servant. So, so you, when you to see the Abraham, you automatically a servant. We we don't we don't what's the name of that thing? We 
don't go on Facebook and take pictures and all that of what we give waitresses and waiters, but I guarantee you they bless. My mother-in-law one time was out with her. She said, shoot, I need to wait y'all table because we believe in blessing. We didn't cook the steak or the lobster or whatever you eat. Amen. Y'all mad at me? Good. I'm doing my job. All right. So if you're the seed of Abraham, you're his servant. And your children of Jacob, his chosen. Now Jacob wrestled, wrestled, become the seed of Israel. Can I go there? Jacob is the father of Israel. Now what happens through Israel was a tribe of Judah. And what came through the tribe of Judah was Jesus Christ. So through Jesus Christ, we're the seed of Abraham because by the way of Jacob and the children of Israel and Jesus Christ, now you realize who you is. Choke. God had plans for you a long time ago. Before you were born. Let me validate that. Sometimes I got to validate stuff because some of y'all ain't reading no Bible. See, he's the, read, read, he's the Lord of our God. Read it. He is the Lord our God. Uh-huh. Hey, what else? His judgments are in all the earth. Everything that's happening. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all can say whatever y'all want. All this with COVID-19 is the judgments of God. I believe they developed it. Don't matter. God let it happen. He released it. <laughs> See, I really can get blunt with this stuff, but because of political reasons, if I preach it the way I do it, the way I teach it, you will get a whole lot of email. But you know, you know if you're a sinner. Amen? We got to realize, we got to line up. He said, he's released, he released it. He, he, there's a show called Clash of the Titans. I remember. And in this scene, they were trying to keep trouble from him. And here's what they said, release the Kraken. Boy, when that Kraken showed up, everything started happening. Now, I know that's Greek mythology, so no, I ain't teaching no Greek mythology. I'm just using this as an example. Don't trip. I use Popeye as an example, too, so don't, you don't trip on that. Don't trip on this. But people like to trip. Yeah, they're teaching some Greek mythology. You, you don't even know the Bible. You ever talk about Greek mythology? I can, go, I can go into the book of Genesis. I can show you where that Greek mythology manifested. When, when the, the angels that had fallen came down and slept with the women. I can show, I can show you that in Scripture. Genesis chapter 6. That's why all that stuff came, demons. So don't get the trip. I can also show you that was dinosaurs. Why? Because the serpent beguiling. And they don't hear what God said. I'm cursing you to crawl on your belly. So that means he had legs. He was a Tyrannosaurus. No. <laughs> Come on, we got to read this word now. Don't be so deep you can't swim. He says, he's the Lord our God. His judgment is all the world. Read verse 8. This part I like. He hath remembered his covenant forever. Oh, he, he remembered his covenant forever. Ah, watch this. He made a covenant with Jacob. You go on down and made a covenant with David. Now, those covenants he made with them, when they died, they couldn't carry on. So he took a seed of David, Jesus, who was a perpetual covenant. And when they crucified him, the devil thought the covenant was over. But on the third day, the covenant got up with all power in his hand. So when you read this, David wrote this thing, talking about a covenant forever, 
But in his mind, he didn't realize God had a plan before he was born. He already had it set up for a covenant that would last forever. Can somebody say we're living in it? Now make sure they six feet don't get. We, he remembered his covenant when? The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. I told you before you were born, before you were a sperm and an egg, when you were in the dimensions of the heavenlies as an unbodied spirit, God had a plan thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Hit yourself say, Shh, I ain't going to fail. You can't fail as you want to fail. Why? Because you got a bounce back mentality. Hit somebody say bounce back. Ain't there a song y'all saying say bounce back or something? Ain't that what y'all say? Bounce back. Now watch this. Verse 9. Which covenant he made with Abraham. And what? And his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law, and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. Saying what? Saying unto thee, what? Will I give the land of Canaan the lot of your inheritance? Read. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, Come on. he suffered no man to do them wrong, yea, he reproved kings for their sakes. Stop, right there. Because of the covenant, God wouldn't let no man do them wrong. Now, that didn't mean nothing didn't happen. It just meant it couldn't mess up the covenant. I might fall, but God ain't going to let you mess it up and make me fall. If I fall, it's because I chose to fall. So by God, because of my covenant, I'm getting up out of this mess and live my best. Because here's what he said. Read. Saying, touch not mine anointed. Oh, Lord. What did he say? Touch and not my what? My anointed uh -huh. and do my prophets no harm. Here we go. Here we go. I'm going to mess up the dish. Preachers use this, bishops use this, missionaries use this, people with titles use this, everybody in organizations use this. But how many know that no matter what level you are, when you are assigned by God, you are a prophet at your level, and God says, touch not my prophet and do them no harm. In other words, you are protected under the same insurance policy that the preachers are. Tell somebody, vindication is fair. I know y'all ready to go get some shrimp. Okay, we're going to go on to this one. And I'm going to let y'all get ready to go home. Because I'm going to tell you about COVID-19. Read. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He break the whole staff of bread. He, I just told you, he released it. He let it happen. The devil is behind it, but he, 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 let, he let it happen. Now, most Christians, I don't think y'all preach like, no, it's the Bible. It's the Bible. He said, more he called for famine upon the land, and he broke the whole staff of bread. Read. He sent a man before them. Uh-huh. Even Joseph, uh -huh. who was sold for a servant. Yeah, go about that word, a servant. He sent Joseph. In Egypt, there was a famine. He sent Joseph. Joseph didn't even know he was going to show up for a famine. Yep. See, we are chosen. We were sent here for this time. Come on. Come on. Bishop. The church was sent here 
for this time. I hear the Spirit saying, and I know some people are going to be offended. I hear the Spirit saying, tongue talking, praise dancing, jumping and shouting ain't what we need right now. What we need is some servants who are willing to stand for what the Word says and show people what the power of God is. Tongue talking, people don't know what you're saying. Shouting, people think you're crazy sometimes. So God said, I want you to be a living epistle in front of these folks. I feel an anointing. I feel an old school anointing on me. Read on some more so I can get about here. Come on. Whose feet they hurt with fetters. Uh huh. He was laid in iron. Come on. Until the time that his word came. Uh huh. And the word what? The word of the Lord tried him. Here, here we go. He was held back to his time. Sometimes you're held back to your time. What ain't promoting me? You're held back to your time. It don't mean God has forgotten you. It don't mean that it's not yours. But sometimes God will hold you back to your time. But I deserve it. Uh, he's holding you back to your time. Because he had plans for you before you were born. But what happens with our humanism is that sometimes we see it, and we're like, that's mine now. And God said, okay, it's yours, but not now. Now, here's the part, Brother Jeff, you don't understand. That don't mean it don't apply for it. Because God likes hungry faith walkers. What that means is when you apply for it, if it don't turn out like you think it should, don't lose faith. I preached a message years ago, and me and the wife still talk about it, called time and chance. Because when it goes around, it's going to come back again. So just be ready when it comes back again. Amen? Read on. What else does it say? The king sent and loosed him. Uh -huh. Even the ruler of the people and let him go free. And what happened? He made him lord of his house and ruler of all his substance ah. to bind his princes uh -huh. at his pleasure and teach his senators wisdom. Y'all got to read this when you get home. God got a plan for you to bind and loose, to correct what's been lost, to bless what you think you have been unblessed in, to make you realize Baby, it ain't been you. It's been me all the time. I've been here the whole time. When you were slipping and dipping at midnight tipping, I was there all the time. When you doubted me, God said I was there all the time. When you was in pain, God said I was there all the time. Why? Because I have an everlasting covenant with you. And I'm not turning my back on you no matter what you do. No matter what you did, no matter what you say, why my covenant is everlasting. And if you're so foolish that you won't let me bless you, I'll bless your seed. I'll make sure it manifests within your seed. Why? Because I told you I was going to do it. And if you want to live and see it, flow in it. But if you don't want to live and see it, I'm going to bless your babies. I'm going to bless your grandbabies. I'm going to bless your great great grandbabies. I'm going to bless your great 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 because I have an everlasting covenant. Give God some praise. God had a plan for us before we were born. What we're going through right now is not to stop us, but to make us stronger. We're servants through the great high God, through the seed of Abraham, through the seed of Jacob. Because of Jesus, we adopted it to the royal family. Be who you are. Walk like you should. Talk faith. Believe faith. Say yeah. Say yeah. Those who are watching by social media, it's not over. To God says it's over. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Wear your mask. Protect yourself. Stay six feet apart. Don't go in crowds. Do a temperature check. When folk come in your house, whether it's your grandbaby, your grandmama, your sister, 
call your brother. You don't know where they've been. So check yourself because the covenant is sure. And God wants to let you know. He wants you to enjoy. Don't be fearful. Be strong in faith. God, God is not the author of fear. Look here. Sister Moore over there had to have surgery. Look at her now. Don't tell me God ain't good. Some of you all in here going through things with your body. But we speak healing over you. God is good. Boy, what's that song you do by? But uh, what's that guy? What's that boy? John P. Key, what's that song you do? I made it. Man, you better get on up here. I'm knowing this boy. Come on. Get, do you want me to get on the drum? I, I need it. Come on. We, we got to do this. Y'all got to. Because y'all got to speak this thing. This, you you got to tape it. The rest of it, you got something to say. Okay, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Because you need to hear this yourself. You do, you need this yourself. Because see, your business is birth right now. And sometimes it get kind of hard and rough. But you got to speak this thing yourself. You got to let go, let God. You hear what I'm saying? Now, everybody that's watching, I want y'all to get ready for this. Come on, put your hands together. Say thank you. You didn't take. 
Clap your hands for Jesus. Somebody say, I made it. <laughs> Father, we honor you and we thank you, God, for the amazing word in this amazing time of worship. We speak by faith, God, that we will grab hold of this word and apply it to our everyday lives. We thank you, God, that anyone who needs healing, healing will manifest for them. Anyone who needs deliverance, deliverance will manifest for them. Anyone who needs salvation, God, we pray in Jesus' name that they will accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And as we leave this place, God, but never your presence, be with us until we meet again at the appointed time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, clap your hands. Make sure you follow as you exit. Follow the arrows and exit here to my right. We say stay motivated about Jesus. We love you. Thank you for tuning in to our live stream at Evangelistic Ministries Church, where we are motivated about Jesus. There are several things that we want you to do. First of all, we want you to connect with us live on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m., and on Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. If you cannot connect with us live, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel at Evangelistic Ministries Church and catch any broadcast and any content that we've been, we've been pushing out. We also want to make sure that you engage with us as you're on with us live. Make sure you put in the comments how the Word of God is blessing you, even right there wherever you are watching live stream or where you're watching by way of YouTube. Make sure that you connect and engage with us. Also, we want to make sure that you give. It is always blessing time at Evangelistic Ministries Church. You can give two ways, by way of Cash App and by way of PayPal. You can also give the conventional way by cash or check, and you can mail your seed to 101 North Elm Street in Jacksonville, Arkansas, 72076. And as always, as we like to say here at that motivated church, stay motivated about Jesus. <laughs>